Being an author, I'm going to give some of these away, but it's for audience participation, so I'm giving a heads up on that, particularly those of you in the front. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Thanks for your help. You're going to lose this one. Oh, no, you are. Okay. I'll, I'll just leave Quick. them in there as long as okay. they don't go over. They won't last long. Yep. Okay. So what a day. I have... Oh, it's been fantastic. I've got to tell you, I'm here through networking. I have... Or I had a client in Caratha. I spoke up there... Um, went up there a couple of times, last time about five years ago. That client moved to Wagga Wagga, took a, a role down there. Last year she invited me down to Wagga Wagga. I ran a series of small business events down there. And in one of those audiences was a person who was connected to LiveCorp. And they connected me with first to Fiona and then to Sam. And then to Paula and here I am today. So networking is something I'm extremely passionate about. And I'm going to ask something that none of the other speakers have asked of you, and I'm, I'm making it really easy for you because I've given you the handout. I'm going to ask you to take this and, and do some homework. I'm going to ask you to actually give this presentation to the people that you work with. I appreciate budget cuts. You can't have all your stuff here. But this is your tribe. And I get really um, passionate when I come to events like this because this is the tribe that, that you function in, that you grow, that you collaborate with. And often when you're outside with non-live export people, they don't really get it. They don't talk the ja jargon. They don't have all those acronyms that you have. They don't understand what they are. By the time you explain it, they still don't get it. But everyone gets it here. So I'm going to take you through the presentation and then I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind repeating it, using the handout, and I know Sarah is going to let me get away with the sustainability because it is about repeating it. But I was really taken throughout the day and, and uh, my presentation was really echoed indirectly by a number of the presenters. And when we talked this morning about global competition and a greater need for collaboration alliances and the strong Asian market and the powerhouse for growth, and I thank the Asian clients and customers that, are, that came to the conference to network with you. And that's such a privilege and an honour for them to be here as well. And that last panel, if you couldn't get great ideas out of that and all the panels today, you just weren't listening. So Jason Strong talked about collaboration. Sam talked about partnerships and finding solutions. Libby from Austrex talked said we are all stakeholders. And we are. We might be different parts of the food chain, but we're all stakeholders. And the one that touched me the most was Jake when he said from Austrex, who talked about the impact on 12,000 families with employment of 600 staff. So when you think there's 300 plus people attending this conference, how many, just turn to the person beside you and just give a bit of a rough idea, I guess, 300 people, how many families do you think that impacts just in Australia? Just share with the person beside you if you would. 300 people at this conference, how many families are impacted? Just share with the person beside you, if you would. Just a guess. A lot. <laughs> it is a lot. OK. OK, thanks for that. Any guesses? How many? 3,000. Is that all? But it could it have to be more. 600, well, 600 was 12,000, so you've just gone half. I think it's more. You said lots, so we'll, we'll reward you for lots. <laughs> but I might get you to just take the other one down to that lady that put her hand up for the... Where was the 6,000? Oh, she's hiding now. Okay. All right, at the back there. Thank you. Round of applause for the participation so you don't have to do much. And you don't have to do much with networking. All you have to do, and I've met some, some really good networkers since I've been here. Let's just check that I'm doing this the right way. No, you're not, Robin. What have you done? Okay, so the difference between networking and strategic alliances. On page one of your white handouts, and if you don't have one, um, there'll be one behind you or beside you. And sustainability, I'm going to ask you to take all the ones that are left over near you home with you. Those of you will have a chance just to go upstairs and freshen up before the drinks tonight. I've got spares. I did cater for 350. So don't want you to kill any more trees with your handouts. 
But networking, I believe, is based on three universal laws. I didn't invent them, they've been around since time began. The first one is that you give without expectation. Do something for someone, not to get something back, do something for someone because you want to help them achieve their goal. So it may have been any one of you who were familiar with this hotel directing someone down to the pavilion this morning, or even this morning at registration time to go, oh, it's just down there, or breakfast is here. It's giving without information, it's giving without expectation. It's not saying, I'll tell you where lunch is served, but it'll cost you 50 bucks. You wouldn't do that. But we all know people who never, who are poor networkers, and every time they do something for you, they want something back. They'll never make it in the bigger picture of strategic alliances, because it's, it's, you pay it forward in many times, in many cases. So the law of abundance is that there's plenty of opportunity and coming here today and watching those presentations this morning, the mind boggles on what the potential live export market is. So no one can be sitting there thinking, and even the plant-based stuff, I'm, I used to live in Townsville in the mid 70s and I used to cook a past, um, what do you call it, past life career, hospitality. I used to cook a thousand steaks a week at the Exchange Hotel back in the 70s. So I've been a beef feeder for a long time. Can't see me eating that plant-based stuff at all. Okay. So the second universal law is the law of abundance. Belief system, there's plenty for everyone. And your market, there certainly is. And new markets will come online. The third one is the law of reciprocity. What you give out comes back tenfold. You give out information, you get back in information. You give out nothing, you get back nothing. The challenge that you've got with reciprocity is that someone over here might help someone over this side of the room and never see them again. But indirectly, that person helps, this person helps, that person, indirectly, it comes back to you. But it's not about keeping a tab on who's done this and you owe me one. The fourth thing that sets a poor networker from a good networker is what I call making a heart-to-heart -heart connection. Now, I've identified some, what I consider to be master networkers and I'll, I'll identify them a little bit later and reward them with a book. They're people that I've chatted to since I arrived yesterday, sort of roughly lunchtime, and there were people who, we didn't talk about anything, any big secrets, but we had a quality conversation. It started about the live export industry, but it went on to all sorts of different things. Where they live, what they're interested with, because it was basically building trust. And trust is the foundation of networking. So three universal laws and making a heart-to-heart -heart connection. Do you want to just share with the person beside you if you agree or disagree with that definition? Just 30 seconds. Agree or disagree with that definition? It's participation. <laughs> may I? May I? Or just ask the first two people who talk. Okay. Which, which, oh, we'll, we'll get them in a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Agree or disagree with that definition? Okay, we need a bit more. Anyone like to say another sentence? We've got two books going down here. A, the spokesperson, he really agrees. Okay, you haven't got far to walk. There's one there. Okay, in the blue. Anyone else? Better give him to his mate behind him too because he dobbed him in. So that's what mates do. Yeah, yeah, I am sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Round of applause for them too. See? You never know. You never know where an opportunity's come. So strategic alliances are when two or more people come together for mutual gain. And that's a collaboration. Now, it can be formal or informal, but it's mutual gain. So whether it's country to country and you're looking to invest in another country or the other country invest here, but you're looking at building that connection. What do you bring to... I'm not going to read every, part, every word on the page. I'm conscious of the time. But what you take to... On page two of your handout, you've got what do you take to a networking event? And what you arrive with is a combination of your passions, your special interests, your life experience, your wisdom and your networks, and your current and your past roles. So that little bit in the middle is you. And sometimes we walk into, maybe not this event, but we walk into other events and we think, oh, I'm just a, or I haven't done much, or, you know, it's a bit tough at the moment, or, you know, I've a deal went wrong or something went wrong or compliance wasn't right or something that we did just didn't, didn't work and we feel less than. But what we've got to realise is that 
Tonight, you've got an opportunity to network with the people that you know. And I noticed that yesterday and even at breakfast this morning. It's good to sit with the people that you know. But what about sitting or chatting, having the intention to talk to three people that you don't know? Just, hi, this is my situation. Just think about something that you're doing. Have you ever experienced that? And they might say, no, I haven't, but this guy has, or this woman over here has, or he has, or she has. Come and talk to them. Because Bill Gates identified a, uh, what's called the trilogy of trust. And the trilogy of trust is the trust that one person has in another that's passed on to the third party. So just as Joe in Wagga Wagga recommended me to Live Corp, because you trust Live Corp, you're here today. So it's a trilogy of trust. Now, it can work for you and it can work against you. Because they might say, oh, what about Fred? And you go, no, don't touch Fred. No, he'll let you down. But then you might go, oh, yeah, he's great. I trust him. I trust her. And that trust is built on the fact that you did what you said you were going to do. That's what it takes. And you, you did it again and you did it again. Now, I'm not saying it's the perfect world and you won't get burned. Not saying that at all. Can't remember how many times I've been burned in my many years of being on, on earth. But... I never give up on people because I think, nah, you don't know what's happening in their life. Just move on. Let it go. And create a network of people who believe in you and who support you. Because if I was to say to you, okay, look, I'm looking at exporting to X country. Who do you know who's done that? Oh, come and talk to Bill. And I spoke to Bill. I'd be happy to pay for Bill's time. If I sat with Bill for one hour and I asked him all the questions that I wanted to know, wouldn't that one hour of his time save me thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars? If I was planning a holiday to Japan and I'd never been there before and I asked someone who's been to Japan and I spoke to them, wouldn't that 10 minutes save me time, money and effort? So I want you to value what you have to contribute when you come to events like this and tonight and tomorrow, tomorrow night when you've got the opportunity to network. So when we talk about what do you bring to the live exchange, we've got that's a couple of pages over. So I'll just cover the cultural intelligence. Because cultural intelligence is on page three. And one of the things I've learned, I've spoken in 13 countries, and I have done some terribly awful, non the right thing to do many times. And I've learned from every one of those major mistakes. And I make the mistakes so you don't have to make them. And I remember once speaking to an elder in, oh, I just really managed the whole thing wrong. I set up a meeting. It wasn't the way it was meant to be. And anyway, about five minutes into it, I thought, I have so stuffed this. And I turned to her and I said, I am so sorry. I so apologise for the way I've arranged this meeting. I realise now it was so culturally insensitive. I am so sorry. If you want to finish it now, it's okay, I will understand. And she turned to me and she laughed and she said, thank you for doing that. I was hoping that you realised you had made a mistake. But she said, I knew your heart was open. I knew you just didn't know better and now you do. Now you do. So cultural intelligence is about taking the time to learn about the culture that you're going to be exporting to or you are currently exporting to. If you've never bothered to learn something about the culture, Now's the time. There's some res re um, references there. And on the next page, it talks about the culture shock. And 1 plus 1 equals 11. 1 plus 1, OK, is 2. But when you open your heart and you open your mind to growing, to building, to understanding a different culture, 1 plus 1 becomes that person's network as well. So 1 plus 1 is 11 contacts that you've got just from befriending that person. Asian people are wonderful networkers and they ne can network you country to country in a blink, in a blink, but not if they don't trust you. So very, very important that we take the time. At the bottom it says, when dealing with different cultures, smart networkers always show respect. Now, I know that, that we've got lots of ways that we've been doing things and sometimes, and, and I'm very proud to be Australian, but sometimes we're a bit of a bit smarty. And we go in and we think we know everything. And in actual fact, we can learn when we've got cultures that have been doing things for a long time, we can still learn from them. And there might be just little things that they do, but it's about respecting the differences. 
Understand that culture shock may mean that you feel very uncomfortable sometimes and that's okay because it is a shift out of our comfort zone. Um, the, the fellow that had lived in Vietnam for five years, he'd be a great person to speak to. He was a great facilitator. But when you're thinking about the different culture, you know, we're so used to... I, I, on the bus coming from the airport yesterday, I sat beside a travel writer and he said, I took a group to Thailand and they wouldn't eat any of the Thai food. I said, why'd they go? What were they expecting? And he said, I have no idea. It was the worst trip ever. Ten days and all they wanted was McDonald's and pizzas. In Thailand, best food. Beautiful food. So they certainly weren't culturally aware. Suspend judgment. Admit that you don't know or understand. Assume differences, not similarities. And ask for help before you need it. And that wonderful African proverb, to go fast, go alone. To go far, go together. So what you bring to Live Exchange are a combination of your, your wisdom and your knowledge, your life ex experiences, uh, your passions and special interests, your current and past roles and your current and past connections. And you open those to people, but only if you bother to speak to a friend, you know, find a new mate. Find a new mate. So the solution is that Part of the, the solution of growing your networks and thinking about the impact that you have. Because just as, as um, Jason said this morning about 600 people impacted 12,000 families and I was told that sometimes we're expecting the, the cattle that we're feeding in their countries to actually eat better than the families. So what you're enabling the workers to do is to build a community. Through working, they're able to provide for their family and the flow on effect from that. So that is very powerful. So I believe, yes, you are live exporters, but you are community builders. And if you take that focus, then it, you're looking at, at just doing things, just a quick mindset, quick change. You, you treat people with incredible respect. So you network with your tribe, you grow your network, and you respect other cultures. Do you want to just turn to the person beside you and just say, just on the few things that we've touched on in the, in the pages in the handout, what's been the key point for you so far that you think, yeah, that's right, I've got, that's hit home a bit. Maybe it's something I'm not doing or I could become more aware of. Just 30 seconds, if you would, share with the person beside you. Okay, thanks for that. Three people, do you want to stand up, introduce yourself and just say what's been the key points so far? Three people, stand up, introduce yourself and share what's been the key points so far. Don't rush me now. Okay, thank you very much. Come on down, get your, get your own book. I'm, he's busy over here at the moment, he's networking. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much. Round of applause. Are you part of the Wyland group? Oh, you, you, were, you were networking. I, just, I found a new one. <laughs> Thank you. Are you part of the, the Wyland group? Angel? Yeah? No? You're not yet. Not yet. You're not part of the Wyland group? Okay. The, all the Wyland group. So this is the Young Live Export Network. Do you want to stand up, all the Wyland group? Oh, they were all out networking. Oh, here we are. Okay. Round of applause. Okay. Round of applause for all of them. I was fortunate to give a presentation in Brisbane at the um, uh, Austrek beautiful office in, uh, in Brisbane and we did a sort of webinar come presentation and then I uh, met with one of them up in, um, in Darwin and they're the future. They're the ones who really get, wow, we want to build 
the future. You know, we want to build a solid profession, a solid industry that we're going to be proud to be part of. So, um, other, another two people, stand up. What's been the key point so far? No one. Yes. Yes. Um, but as Mary explained and as Mark has explained, it's, it's quite relevant for me to see from the other point of view and to see how our leaders are going to be doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Round of applause. We've all been caught so many times, you know? And thank you. And, and sometimes I just go, you know, I have no idea. I'm sure I've done the wrong thing here, but I'm not sure what I did wrong. Would you mind telling me? And they go, well, you know... You don't write on the back of a business card or something in Asia, something like that, so obvious, but I didn't know. Yeah. Last one. No? Okay, you won't waste time. We've got a few more points. Okay. So, LinkedIn. How many of you are on LinkedIn? Not enough. Who's got more than 500 on their LinkedIn? I know Sarah has. Yeah. For those of you who aren't on it, Facebook to me is like um, going to the pub. And LinkedIn is like going to a business network or a conference. So the great thing about it is that when you, when you connect with someone, you can look up their profile. If you're going into a meeting, this, is, this has saved me so many times. Going into a meeting, looking up, looking, you can, it's not stalking, you're just looking at the person's profile, you can send them a message, and you get to know something about them. And to me, it's a courtesy to walk in and say, oh, look, I... Checked your LinkedIn profile and noticed you grew up in Geelong. Oh, you know, how long have you been living in, blah, blah, blah. It's a courtesy that you show. And you can find, you can track who they're connected to, find the, the you know, the trilogy of trust. It's a fabulous tool. I, have, I was five years ago absolutely anti-social uh, media, didn't want to know about it. But now I have about 13 and a half connections, uh, 13 and a half thousand connections and I've got um, maybe, depending on the time of the year, because I also ghostwrite books and... Um, maybe get 60 to 70% of my work from LinkedIn. So if I was in your shoes or your seat working in a global marketplace, I'd be connected to LinkedIn. And, and I know that Wylan has a, has a great network there. So you've got um, instant communication and collaboration, potential collaborations. And the key to LinkedIn is pick up the phone. Once you connect with someone and you know there's a bit of synergy there, just say, oh, what's a good time to phone you? And whatever the phone call will cost, it will be worth it because it's fine to have 100 emails going back and forth, but that just chews up days and days and days of time. But if you just pick up the phone, you can get to yes really very quickly and you've got all this background information on them. Okay, so competition versus collaboration. This is your tribe and you're wanting to get to know your export clients. So there's some tips there on how you might get around to do that. I, again, I won't read word for word. But I want to talk about tonight and tomorrow. And tomorrow night. Have you seen those raffle? The, not raffle, the auction prizes downstairs. Very nice. I'm going to put in a bid. I've got to go back before the dinner, but I'm going to put in a bid for those holiday ones. They're great. So three conversation starters. If you had to sum up, and this is what I'd love you to do when you present to your, um, your staff. If you said to them... Networking is about acting like the host, not the guest. Act like the host, not the guest. Everyone gets that. They know what you mean. So start there and then give them the definition and then a few little how-tos. A question that's not on those three that you can ask is, this is my situation. Have you ever experienced that? And what did you do? Because if you're talking to someone who's had a major drama or non-compliance issues, all of those things that, that can trip you up and they talk to you about how they got through that, then it can help you. It doesn't always have to be negative. Um, what would it take to see yourself as a community builder? That's my wish for you, that you leave this conference and realise that you're not just networking, you are in fact a community builder. Um, what one key point, not just from my presentation, but from the day, that's a great conversation start, starter for you tonight. And what is your wow, the thing that's unique to you, something that you're quite passionate about doing? I mentioned the three networkers, and I know I will, they might not all be in the room. 
one of them, the first one, was a lovely lady, and I think her husband's in the room right now. Uh, I call her Miss Warwick, but her name's Edwina Stark, and she's from the Warwick Engineering. They're, they're one of the exhibitors, and I met her. Um, so I know she's not in the room, but her husband? No, he was early in the day. Um, Sarah, um, I'm calling her Miss MLA because that's how I sort of met her, and we talked about sustainability, and she was horrified that I had handouts, but now I'm really pleased that I, that I had them. And the wonderful Vietnam guests, and I'll come and see this lady, there were um, two ladies. Uh, one is here, this um, in the lovely um, mustard top, and the other lady over here, I think, in black. So I'll come and see you. I'll sign the books for you. Okay, so I leave you with the thought, it's been a privilege to be, here, to be on this program. Absolute privilege. Networking is a lot like watching sunrises. If you don't show up, you'll never know what you missed. So thank you very much for showing up. Thank you for staying for the, for the uh, presentation and please be sure to take all those handouts home so that you can share them with your staff. If you'd like some complimentary uh, copies, e-book copies of the book, just send me, uh, shoot me an email and I'll send you a couple of books electronically. Thank you very much. <laughs>